All right, man, torture talk. Six o'clock show, six o'clock show. We in here, baby. We in here, six o'clock show. Thank y'all for joining with me. Thank y'all for joining with me. So today's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, Kendrick Lamar. After this interview, what happens now? Because there's a lot of people who are seeing a lot of things. And um, yeah, this interview was, that interview was uh, pretty, it was actually pretty big because a lot of people are talking about it. So it was pretty big. So before I get into that, you know, I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please to describe me. If you're new here, you work for your script of today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where the final one's at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch. I do have content. It's absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links on the screen. Cash app, PayPal is in the description. Call me the Hidden Gym. Went from 1,300 subscribers to over 11,000. I should be 12,000 real soon. And uh, Million by Monday. Also, too, let me know where you're from. Yeah, so we're going to get right into this clip, man. And I appreciate y'all for being here with me, man. Six o'clock. I know y'all going home from work and all this good stuff. Maybe y'all, some of y'all are going to work. And uh, yeah, man, appreciate y'all contribution to this channel. So let's get it, man. All right, so let's get to it, man. Fantastic hip hop. Y'all know where to find him at, right in the description. Let's go. <laughs> he ever has for this extended of a time. And in this. Now, after only speaking to us this year through the songs he released when he was on stage performing and through some of the biggest announcements any rapper has ever told the world like that he would be headlining the Super Bowl halftime show, Kendrick Lamar has finally ended his streak of exclusively talking to us in the most insane and shocking ways that any MC ever has for this extended of a time. And in this moment, for the first time, not just in 2024, but in years, he has released to us an entire interview to understand his thoughts following his beef with Drake and every Everything that is yeah, that's that's actually that is uh that's one thing I wanted to talk about too, and I'm gonna get into that in a little bit. Kendrick Lamar, this is this is his third time actually speaking. Well, actually, second time because the Super Bowl in this interview, we ain't counting the song he dropped, "Watch the Party Die." I'm saying we ain't counting that. This is this is the second time he actually spoke after the battle. This is crazy. Let's keep it going. And down, and this isn't just any traditional interview, but it is a conversation where none other than his fellow TDE family member and close collaborator SZA is asking him questions. And now with this back and forth between these two superstars, which contains a ton of important information, which we are going to be looking into because this interview is telling us way more than it seems on the surface. Kendrick has caused everyone around Drake's team and the media merchants who still can't get over the fact that Drake lost the beef like DJ Academics to go absolutely insane over this interview. And as we know, Drake pretty much keeps guys like Big Ack and all the other influencers who are just like him on a string so they can seemingly follow his orders and spew out whatever narratives he wants to get across. Based on the way the Drake side of social media was acting, we can see that this interview must have made Drake sit there and once again cause him to further go into this state of shambles that he has been stuck in, which is making him release worse music and do more pathetic stunts by the day. And now when it comes to this interview and Kendrick Lamar releasing it, while some people are frustrated and seem to be giving Kendrick flag for releasing a series of statements that seem to dodge mentioning Drake and his sheer and utter disdain for him, and others are calling him out for pretty much making this a conversation. <laughs> oh, man, you gotta love, you gotta love mainstream people, man. You gotta love these media talking heads. You gotta love these people. So they're mad that he didn't mention Drake. <laughs> Yo, it's so crazy how this whole thing played out, man. It's so crazy how this played out. I, yo, I got so much to say, but let's keep it going with someone he is friends with and not a real journalist who can ask him unfiltered and challenging questions. While these are fair things to call out and I think down the line Kendrick should sit with a legend in rap media to give the culture an unfiltered and raw conversation about where he was at during this time that has shifted everything in the genre as we know it. In this moment we are in right now, Kendrick doing this type of interview was the perfect move because in the situation he is in, with a Super Bowl halftime performance, stadium tour, a new album, and possibly a lot more coming up. Kendrick is still within this era and mode where he needs to be treating every public and artistic decision of his like he is on the chessboard and is still battling not just Drake, but the entire genre as a whole, and this is exactly what he is doing. 
because Kendrick knows that the fallout from this feud is far from over. So it's important to understand that just as Kendrick knew how to start this beef and play his hand masterfully every single step of the way, he also is showing that he knows how to operate in this post back and forth era where despite us seeing the very peak and height of Kendrick and Drake, this does not mean things are over from a tactical perspective. Because as we have seen already, that's true. I'll be honest with y'all. This battle ain't over. I'm telling y'all, man. When Kendrick Lamar drop his album, I'm telling y'all there's going to be a song on there where he really go crazy. And I don't think it's going to be more crazy on Drake. As in like dissing Drake. I think he's going to really put it in perspective about not like us and what it meant and why he did what he did. And I think it's going to be the conclusion of this because I'll be honest with y'all. I believe Drake right now, he's looking for, he's looking for closure from Kendrick. I'll be honest with y'all. He really is. And I don't think that he is going to get it. Not not now, but I think on the album he's going to get it. Because <sighs> let me just finish this and we're going we to continue on. Petty on Drake's end, they are not. And Kendrick is obviously well aware of this, and he seems to use this interview as a space to do things which will move his agenda forward. Which, first off, speaking of being aware, make sure you are more aware of when these videos drop by hitting that like button and subscribing. It helps me out a ton. And now, for the quality of the interview and to make sure that he is still delivering people a series of thoughts that do hold value and make this entire move from him worthwhile, he reflects on where he is at as a person and talks about how he has been healing as a man amongst much else which we will be looking at. But he is also showing that in this era where Drake has not stopped focusing on the beef and every decision he has made has been some sort of an indirect response to Kendrick, that Lamar is pushing him further and further down into a pit of irrelevance where more and more Drake seems like an afterthought. And SZA seems to be in on the joke and it really does require having a conversation with somebody he knows to do something like this in the first place. Because from referencing small lyrical cues that were set on Kendrick's diss tracks and then Lamar answering these questions in ways that are truthful on his end, but seemingly almost respond to them in a way where he is trolling Drake by acting like he is non-existent. Kendrick really is excelling in the art of war here because without most people even realizing it, he is separating himself further and further away from Drake, which is therefore not letting Drake get anywhere near the spotlight of where the attention of the culture is at and more than ever in this interview. And what really seemed to be set up as the viral moment of this interview would show that Kendrick Lamar is definitely online way more than we know it just because of how it seemed to perfectly stir up social media right in the way that he seemingly wanted is one thing about fantastic hip hop, <laughs> it's very difficult to pause because he is he's a run on sentence guy. Anyway, um, I definitely think that Kendrick has studied the art of war, and I definitely think that he's looking at it from the point of view of I'm not gonna give you no relevance. I'm not gonna give you no relevance, even though people would say you're the bigger artist, but I'm not gonna even speak your name. And I think that that's fascinating to do. You know what I'm saying? Because we all know we can be admit that Drake is the bigger artist when it comes to popularity out of the out of the country, I would say. But I was I mean, but in the country, maybe something a little bit different. But yeah, let's keep it going. When SZA asks him, can I ask you a hyper masculine question? You can also tell me to shut the F up. What does not like us mean to you? And then Kendrick responds laughing. Not like us is the energy of who I am, the type of man I represent. Now, if you identify with the man that I represent, which then SZA butts in saying, break the man down for me. Kendrick then goes on to say, this man has morals. He has values. He believes in something. He stands on something. He's not pandering. He's a man who can recognize his mistakes and not be afraid to share the mistakes and dig deep down into fear-based ideologies or experiences to be able to express them without feeling like he's less of a man. If I'm thinking of not like us, I'm thinking of me and whoever identifies with that. And now on social media, while Drake fans went crazy and were livid by this response as they think that Kendrick is trying to make himself sound smarter and greater than he is, 
When you break down what Kendrick is saying, these words perfectly do align with the morality and reasoning to make a song in Not Like Us because with what everything Kendrick is stating. He's once again dissing but yet pushing Drake further and further away from him than ever because instead of explaining what we know about the record, which is everything that he says right on the nose about Drake that nobody has stopped saying for almost half a year. He just talks about the opposite of what Drake is, which is what he represents. So even when talking about what is becoming the biggest diss track in the history of rap and recorded music, Kendrick somehow manages to tactically remove Drake from the equation here while also quietly reminding people of how pathetic he is. And while again, the only way you can be this tactical in an interview is if you have everything planned out with someone who is a close friend, which is clearly the case here. This is a masterful move in the mission of what Kendrick Lamar is doing and is really only making him look more prepared than ever. Because if we compare post-beef interviews that we have seen in hip-hop history, such as when Drake was on the shop after the push of T-Beef, Drake crying to LeBron on a TV special was one of the most humiliating things we have ever seen from somebody who calls themselves an MC, as he made himself <laughs> Humiliating himself. Um, I don't know if Drake, he, did Drake do an interview? Has he done an interview? I don't think so. He hasn't said anything either. He's learning this from Kendrick, but he's still taking shots at Kendrick. Watch the party live. Like, this stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? But let's keep it going. More bitter about the loss he took and reminded people of what Pusha did at every chance. Meanwhile, with Kendrick, because of how nuanced and well-spoken he is, he manages to address everything we need to know and is able to take another victory lap all while keeping the spotlight completely away from Drake. And now considering that we are at the point where Kendrick Lamar can even turn a print interview into another power move, I mean, at this point, my expectations for everything he has coming down the line are only getting higher. And they absolutely should be, because we have never seen a rapper have so much control over what they are doing and the visions they are trying to make us see. And now aside from these power moves in the interview, getting insight into where Kendrick Lamar is actually at right now was also great to hear and was very telling about the type of creative path and mission he has been on. And what's really great about listening to Kendrick in these rare moments off the mic where he is not being an MC, is that we get to see that just like the rest of us, despite what Drake stands will make you try to think, he is human and he struggles with things like we all do. And while Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers really did put this into perspective and did a- That's, that's a hundred percent facts. I think Kendrick has, he's put that, he's put that out there. And a lot of, a lot of people, I don't know, it's just weird. A lot of people act like, because the man is admitting that he has flaws, people look at him and they, they seem like they're a little mad about it. I don't understand. Like, I don't understand how people look at a person who's being honest about their life. Y'all just get upset about it. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Better job at showing this in a musical body of work than almost any other album ever has. It's always great and interesting to hear from someone like Kendrick about the fears and worries he has. And while some people on Drake's side of things and in hip hop try to paint this image that Kendrick thinks he is better than the rest of us, if you actually read the text in this interview and actually give it just a slight bit of critical thinking, everything is on display to show you the exact opposite. Because from talking about some of the most emotional moments he has ever experienced in his life, to even just talking about some low points he's faced that he doesn't like to think about. Kendrick Lamar always, and now more than ever, has been so open about the fact that he struggles with things and that he is far from being perfect. And the more you read this interview, you see the fundamental difference that separates men like Kendrick from men like Drake, which is that people like Kendrick have no problem letting us into the most awkward and unflattering moments of their past. Meanwhile, with someone like Drake, they just love to dodge any sort of accountability or shortcomings as a man. And matter of fact, as Drake has gotten older, what has been reflected in his music is that he doesn't just avoid growing up one bit, but that he has created this world of delusion for himself where he sees his negative traits as strong points. And this is why so much of his music in recent years has been framed in this weird way where- I will say this too, like, he's absolutely right about that. Drake, Drake does believe that his strong points his weak points are his strong points. And he and he doesn't want to correct them. That's a that is a great observation. Because I thought of that too. I just never said it, but he definitely do that. All of his all of his weak points, he looks at them as like a badge of honor or some his strong points, and it's not true. Really doesn't uh get him nowhere. 
Drake seems to be aging in reverse because this is the actuality of what's been happening. So with this Kendrick Lamar interview where he is talking about letting himself mature and feel things that he says he was never encouraged to do when he was growing up, while this isn't the post coverage that we want and need yet, I think we have to remember that we are not at the point where Kendrick can start reflecting on the past yet because it's all too soon and things are really not over. And at this time, a look into the mind of Lamar while he is at a point where many are still eyeing him and trying to take the throne from him. But despite this, he is laying his cards out and showing us that he is stronger than ever by being an open and honest man who is trying to become a better version of himself every day. Overall, it just shows this rare ability to avoid conforming and falling into the trap of what everyone in hip-hop is trying to pull off. But it's also showing and setting a precedent in the culture by being a better and more honest person that you'll set yourself free and can only end up having more success. And now beyond this, as Kendrick Lamar talks about how his goals are so much bigger than what music can do and solve, this seems to reveal to us that Kendrick Lamar's blueprint of what he has to do in this era may be even bigger and more grand than we ever thought. And as we know from SZA and others around him that he does have a new album coming, this seems to be teasing that something even greater that we don't understand yet could be down the line after everything that is 2025 is already setting itself up to give us. So overall, at this point, I think we can expect that Kendrick Lamar still has a ton to offer us before he ends this era of his career, as what everything in this new interview is telling us is that this post-beef era is only going to get more historic before we even know it. So now with all this said, let me know. What did you think of this new... All right. Make sure y'all go uh and subscribe to fantastic hip-hop yeah i definitely think that uh kendrick has figured out a way to suck the life out of the the air out of the room or suck the life out of the room when it comes to him and drake and this whole back and forth thing i think drake is trying his best to keep up but you can tell that kendrick is much more smarter when it comes to these type of things than drake he's way ahead of these guys and even when you're talking about J. Cole, I think J. Cole is very good with his pen, but Kendrick is just on another level when it comes to thinking about different topics and different subjects and different ways of combating certain things. Because I think he was trained, he was taught by people about these things and these up and coming things that happen. Yeah, he's, he's, he's very, he's very, if I was a, if I was battling this thing about battle rap, right? <laughs> Reality rap always wins. No matter which way you cut it, it always wins. And a lot of these rappers, they just don't know personas and the uh, one hit or what is it? Uh, one line zingers don't work. When someone is a reality rapper and they put reality in your face, you will always lose. Always. At least 99% of the time. All right, man. So y'all have a good night. I'll see y'all in the morning. Peace. Bye-bye. <laughs>